Hey everyone, so I'm Banu Nagasundaram. I'm a senior product manager technical at AWS. I'm here with Amit Mukherjee, who is a senior solutions architect at AWS. We are here to talk to you about AWS Panorama, how customers can bring computer vision to the edge. So let's get started. What we are hearing from customers is that customers are looking to capture the value from their existing IP cameras. The visual data from the cameras that they have is doubling every two and a half years. There is a lot of data out there for customers to capture value out of, and most of them go unanalyzed as of today. What value are customers looking for from these cameras is that they can, they're realizing they can automate a variety of tasks. Computer vision enables customers to capture these video streams and process those video streams to get outcomes such as detecting objects, counting number of people, or classifying objects based on the type, based on the condition. They can also measure distance between objects between items, measure the proximity. They can read text and from labels or barcodes, and then they can recognize gestures and physical activities. All of these can be automated using computer vision, analyzing the data from the video camera streams. These outcomes help impact businesses and helps improve their processes. Let's see a few examples here. The Impact is that computer vision helps customers to improve their performance and productivity of industrial processes. In quick service restaurants, computer vision can help customers monitor auditor order accuracy or vehicle traffic. Similarly, in retail environments, customers can gather data that helps them improve the operations and overall customer experience. In many industries, worker safety is an important factor where computer vision can be used to enhance the worker safety of the employees in those um, customer environments. All of these are the different impacts that customers are looking for using computer vision across industries. And this helps customers to automate their business processes, improve the efficiency and overall productivity. To do this, customers are looking at um, computer vision at the edge. Why edge specifically? Customers require low latency for real-time insights so that they can take either uh, the real-time analytics results and act upon it or connect the results into real-time action on site. So they require low latency. The second reason why computer vision at edge is important for customers is that they face bandwidth constraints where streaming back to the cloud can be limited because of the bandwidth that they have available on site. Not every video from every camera can be streamed back to the cloud at the same time given their network constraints. So customers prefer local computer vision at the edge closer to where their processes happen. The third reason why customers require computer vision at the edge is because they process data on premises. They prefer doing that versus sending it outside of their physical location boundary based on their data processing requirements and rules that they have established. So these are the three reasons why customers are looking for um, computer vision specifically to happen on their site at the edge and benefit from all the process improvements and the business impact that we alluded to in the previous slide. So to achieve those impacts and use computer vision at the edge, customers have three different approaches that they're taking today.
Let's walk through each one of them. Starting from the left, customers today have standalone solutions, which is a solution for a specific use case that they have installed on their premise from say a vendor one, and then a very specific custom solution for their use case from a vendor two, and uh, similarly from a vendor three for another use case. They have all these standalone solutions that work independently. It solves for their particular need and it's easy to deploy. However, what customers are realizing today is that these solutions do not talk to each other. There is no way for them to get an overall analytics and information from all of these three independent solutions. Many of these solutions are closed, as in they don't have, the customers don't have access to the data collected by the vendor. And in cases where they do have access, they do not have access to modify, iterate, and process the data holistically. And in some cases, these data collected from customers' premises is also proprietary to that vendor. So customers have a challenge in getting an overall um, solution and a vision into their entire data suite. Customers also realize they have to work with individual vendors to manage individual solutions that does not scale. While this solution exists today, it's um, an easy to deploy, it's very closed and proprietary standalone solutions. Some customers are also looking at unmanaged or DIY solutions where they choose open and flexible services from AWS Cloud, such as IoT, Greengrass, SageMaker, and Systems Manager, and put that all together into an architecture that works for them. They use that cloud architecture and connect to an edge computer, build the overall pipeline that is required to ingest videos from their existing cameras, process them along with um, maintaining the software updates, maintaining the business logic, all the dependencies that come along with putting um, a system together from edge to the cloud. While this is open and flexible and gives customers the option to use the building blocks and build a system on their own, customers realize that it's difficult to build and maintain this solution. In addition, it is hard to scale because the edge compute solution that they have built at one location, for example, cannot scale to thousands of locations without um, having individual uh, managed service offering. Realizing all these difficulties that customers are facing and the solution approaches they're taking, what we sought out in Panorama to solve for is to have an open and flexible environment that allows for customers to easily build and scale their overall solution while removing any kind of maintenance that they have to do for a managed service. So AWS Panorama offers the cloud solution, which is the service. You, go, you have a console, you can connect and build. It also offers the on-premise um, solution, which is the hardware, a managed hardware that helps you build the application, which includes the machine learning model and the business logic. This appliance and SDK that is on premise connects seamlessly to the cameras on customers' premises and also connects back to the cloud without the customer having to spend time in managing the overall um, service. So this is open and flexible and helps customers to um, scale faster across their thousands of sites for their edge computer vision needs. So with this view, let's get a little bit more into what AWS Panorama is. AWS Panorama, like I mentioned, is a machine learning appliance and a software development kit. So the appliance sits on customer's premises 
The software development kit helps vendors, hardware vendors like Lenovo, to build hardware systems that are Panorama enabled. So AWS Panorama is, comes as an appliance from AWS. There is also a hardware offering from Lenovo, which gives customers a choice on their price performance to choose one type of hardware or the other for their particular application need. AWS Panorama is also a cons, provides a console and service APIs that connects to any one of these appliances on customers' premises, offering the full stack that is required for computer vision at the edge. Customers use the cloud service and the appliance to make predictions locally with high accuracy and low latency. So with this different parts that make up AWS Panorama, let's walk through in the next slide how Panorama works. So where do we start with Panorama? We start with a machine learning model. The number one step on the left is the machine learning model can either come from SageMaker, where customers have built a machine learning model. With AWS Panorama, customers also have the option to bring their own model that they have trained outside. Customers can also bring pre-built third-party models, such as from our ecosystem of partners offering machine learning models. Customers can then import these machine learning models into the Panorama Service Console. They can build the application or business logic around the model that defines what action they want to take once the model has come out with certain predictions. Once you have the model and the application, you use the console to provision the device. And then you manage the camera streams, which is connect, which is on the console. You can connect to the existing cameras on customers' premises and then deploy the full app. So this is what happens in the cloud side with Panorama Console. So now, number three, step number three, talks about customers' premises. So the device, it's either a Panorama appliance or an appliance from our partner, such as Lenovo's ThinkEdge. Sits on customers' premises, can be connected to their local area network. This device then discovers and ingests camera feeds. Then it runs the CV applications that was deployed as part of the console steps in the cloud. The CV application is run against the camera feeds that are ingested, and then the inference results are published locally. The videos never leave this device if the customer chooses to. So the results, the inference results that are published from the device can be used to take two types of actions. One, the inference results can be routed to AWS Cloud and can be further processed upon. So you can send the results such as to Amazon S3 or use um, Kinesis video streams to stream the videos or use CloudWatch, etc., and take the results and have real-time analytics running on the cloud to make informed decisions based on those analytics. And customers can also stream the results to a local system on their premises that they can integrate the results with in order to take a real-time action on site that helps some of line of business applications for automation. So this is the cloud to edge picture of how AWS Panorama works overall connecting to customers' existing IP cameras. So now let's go through and see what the device options with AWS Panorama can offer for customers. With both the AWS Panorama device 
and the Lenovo ThinkEdge SE70 device, the setup for the device can happen in minutes. Both these devices connect to the IP cameras on customers' premises using RTSP protocols. Once the devices are connected to the camera streams, you can run the custom models or the production-ready CV applications at the edge on Panorama. These devices will then infer the images on the customer's site on those connected video streams. Both these devices are ruggedized. They have specific IP ratings. And in the next slide, we'll go through the technical specifications of each of these in more detail. Both these devices have NVIDIA Xavier hardware GPU in them, offering customers the ability to run computer vision on the GPUs. Both these devices support running multiple camera streams in parallel. So you could run one application across multiple camera streams. In addition, you could run multiple models per stream. So you can have different types of machine learning computer vision models processing on individual streams that are connected to these devices. So now let's see a little bit more about the technical specifications of each of these devices. On the left, you see the Lenovo ThinkEdge SE70 device. This is sold by Lenovo with an MSRP of $2,339. You can reach out directly to Lenovo to purchase this device. You can also find more of this information on our AWS Panorama product detail page. The list price for Panorama appliance is $4,000. You can see in this slide that we have compared the storage capabilities, the RAM, the type of GPU in each of these devices, and the performance of compute, where the Lenovo device often offers 21 tera ops of peak performance and the Panorama appliance offers um, 32 teraops peak performance based on the uh, NVIDIA Xavier GPU specs. They, have, uh, they both have two big gigabit ethernet and their IP rating, the ruggedized form factor, the Lenovo device comes with an IP52 rating and the Panorama appliance comes with IP62 rating. Like I mentioned, you can see more of this technical specifications, comparison, and pricing charts on the AWS Panorama product detail page and also on the Lenovo's ThinkEdge SE70 page. So with an AWS Panorama enabled appliance, we talked about how customers can bring models and applications from the partner environment. So just let's just walk through how customers do that today. Customers can build custom models where you can train the models anywhere with the support of machine learning frameworks such as TensorFlow, Python, etc., and bring those models over to a Panorama-enabled appliance. Customers can purchase ISV models and applications specific for their use cases, such as yard management, for transportation and logistics, for smart cities, for restaurant operations, such as quick service restaurants, and for retail analytics to improve operations in your retail store. So once you either have built or bought a machine learning model and an, and an application that you want to run on AWS Panorama, you can use those applications on the device to run production applications. In addition, customers can try the AWS Panorama sample GitHub, which offers a variety of machine learning models and applications that customers can try to understand their use case, understand the device performance, and then use that to inform 
them to build and buy machine learning models and applications. So we spoke about partners who offer these machine learning models. Those are the application and solution builders. Some of them are listed here who offer CV applications and fully integrated solutions that address specific use cases for customers in, for a given industry or a vertical. These are like Deloitte, Tensor IoT, Pilot AI, Provectus, Big Mates, and Taskwatch. For Panorama enabled device OEMs, these are partners who offer an array of third party AWS Panorama SDK enabled devices, such as the Lenovo one that we saw, to run CV applications on customers' premises. In addition, AWS Panorama partners with hardware system integrators who provide the consultation on camera selection, camera management, and device deployment on site, such as Stanley and Convergent. This ecosystem of partners support the edge computer vision value chain with AWS Panorama. But these partners, when customers begin to use and deploy AWS Panorama, we observe customers require three types of teams to work together to deploy this overall solution that brings the business impact that they're looking for with computer vision at the edge. These three different types of teams that work together include networking, data science, and application developments. The networking team works with the AWS Panorama team and the partner ecosystem to install the device on site, connect to their network, work through the um, RTSP streams, which is the protocol used to connect to the existing cameras, fix and work through their firewall and proxies, work through the connecting the results back using protocols such as MQTT for on-premise um, actions. The next one is the data science teams that works on CV model developments. So partners and customers work together to bring their data science teams together and work on solutions for their particular use case, such as object detection, segmentation, work through data labeling, they benchmark performance to get to the overall solution. In addition, there are these application development teams that build and maintain the overall application in different form factors, such as using containers, they build and stream the analytics and also work through the database requirements. So these three teams together with both the partners and customers work to bring computer vision at edge to life to solve for a customer's use case. So we spoke about the way in which all of this comes together, how customers can use AWS Panorama. Next, we will talk about AWS Panorama customers who are using Panorama to solve for their use cases in production. Customers across a variety of industries, such as retail, transportation, manufacturing, airports, traffic management, and energy sector, use Panorama to solve for their business needs. Here you can see a few of them that are listed. We will walk through a few to go through in detail the problem, the solution, and the impact that the customers have seen with Panorama. Let's start with the airport use case. Cincinnati or Northern Kentucky International Airport, CVG, were looking for a solution to automate their manual process and gain insights into their operations. Airport operations is a complex problem that requires monitoring, 
multiple different operations that are executed in parallel in real time in order to avoid, for example, congestion on the curbside or look at turnaround times on their aircrafts, et cetera. CVG partnered with TaskWatch, one of our ISV and SI solution providers, and used Panorama to bring computer vision to their existing IP cameras that help monitor over 70,000 square feet of airport traffic lanes. TaskWatch solution provided CVG with enhanced operational insights. It helped them improve the curbside congestion by detecting traffic flow and helping CVG make informed decisions based on that predictions. TaskWatch's airport operation solution also provides real-time alerts to airport staff that helps them take immediate actions on site. TaskWatch solution runs on AWS Panorama and connects to CVG's existing IP cameras and provides these inference results for them. The impact of TaskWatch solution running on Panorama for CVG is that they were able to improve their response time to issues. They were able to keep the traffic flowing and enhance their customer experience. So CVG was also able to use TaskWatch solution to enhance their curbside capacity, which was limited. So overall, AWS Panorama helped airport customer like CVG improve their operations by running computer vision at the edge. Let's look at another example. This is an example of Port of Vancouver, a large port in Canada that used Deloitte solution for container tracking to solve for their challenges. The specific challenge that Port of Vancouver was facing was that they required, they, they were monitoring these container flow within their yard pretty manually. And they have automated this using computer vision with Panorama. The cameras that they've connected, the existing cameras on the port site includes access cameras. They worked with the installation partner, um, Convergent. And the overall solution built by Deloitte helps this customer to indicate how long a container has been at any particular um, location within the yard. This was a challenge that was not solved for efficiently without using computer vision at the edge because it involves a lot of manual processes and tracking multiple um, data sheets across the port in order to understand um, the given location of a container. AWS Panorama solved for this by enabling the customer to read the um, labels on the container and pinpoints um, the exact location of the container within that yard. The impact of Deloitte solution built on AWS Panorama for Port of Vancouver is that they were able to expedite this container inspection. They were able to offer container management at a much lower cost and improve the overall user and port experience. Another example is that of Philips 66, which is a multinational energy company with um, convenience stores and gas stations in 48 states within the US. These sites required Philips 66 to understand the in-store heat maps and the vehicle dwell times at a fuel dispenser. They wanted to understand this in order to improve the customer experience at Philips 66 locations. 
They also wanted to understand the conversion rate of the customers coming to the fuel stations and then entering the stores and keep track of the number of customers that they are able to convert from fuel station to um, their convenience stores. Philip 66 built this solution using AWS Panorama to solve for this and are continuing to gather real-time analytics on the traffic flow and get better customer insights to improve their overall customer experience. So these are multiple examples of how customers are using AWS Panorama to solve for their um, business requirements and automate operations within their sites. Now we will have Amit Mukherjee, our senior solutions architect, walk us through a specific live demo outlining how this retail operations works in real life. So here I'm handing off to Amit um, to take it away. Thank you. Thanks, Manu, for handing over the live demo. So here on, we're going to talk about a retail use case, um, a specific which we every day see <clears throat> in the retail store. For example, the very common use case is out of stock event. And let's say a customer went to a retail store and they want to buy their favorite wine bottle. And uh, he always uh, finds her favorite wine bottle and happy customer. But in a certain day, the retail store does not have her, uh, her favorite wine bottle and customer returned back to house with an unhappy. Now, the store manager who do a routine inspection and he found that there are a lot of wine bottles are out of stock and you quickly come up and relentless the whole self with their wine bottles. But this simple results have a lost uh, business revenue. But not only that, there are so many customers has returned back home with an unhappy and dissatisfied. So one OSS study conducted by Nax has estimated for this kind of a situation at least 40% of the software encounter once a week this OS situation. And the study also estimate that the annual loss could range between one to four million for small to large volume retail chain based on their initial estimates. And most importantly, the study also mentioned around 25% of the out of stock issues occur when the item is available in the store, but not in the cell at the time software wants to purchase the cell. So with machine learning, especially computer vision applications, the retailer can improve on cell product availability and increase the sales revenue and improve the customer satisfaction. With that, we're gonna go to the actual demo for the same use case. So this is my actual demo setup. So if you see in this setup, we can see there are six bottles lined up. The way the environment has set up that I have uh, six bottles put it into the table, assume that that is a retail self. And I have also a camera, which is uh, I, uh, pointing to the bottles and that camera stream feeding into the actual Panorama appliances where we have a machine learning models running on. So in this use case, we're gonna talk about how the floor manager can automatically get notifications if the number of bottles goes below thresholds. So for this use case, we have defined the threshold as six, three, and we have number of bottles in the cell that is six. And this is a, just an email. Um, the, the floor manager has set it up. We say there is no notification because the count is above the thresholds. Now let's assume that store opens and customers bought two bottles from the self, so which is kind of a happy path still. Still there is a four bottle left and the threshold is three. You can see there is no notifications come up. Now the day getting hotter and customer wants to buy two more bottles from the self and then uh, it goes below the threshold has been defined here. So which is instead of three, it's now become two and you see that immediately the notifications came up and in saying that there are um, two bottles left in this uh, cell. And with that simple notification, floor manager can come up and quickly relentless that whole, uh, whole cell. Now, 
if customer if the store manager wants they can put it back this bottles back to the self and they can update the threshold value and accordingly it can be st uh, still trigger based on the threshold the new threshold has been defined by the customer now to def to talk about how this solutions has been built i'm going to switch back to the presentation and we'll talk about the architecture of this piece <clears throat> so as i said the way it has been set up the ip camera is pointing to the retail self and there are uh, um, uh, the portals which is monitoring on and it's sending the camera feed the stream into the panorama appliances where we have the applications code and the model running and in the cloud side we are sending the actual uh, the frames which is basically images to an s3 bucket and also the metadata of that image such as uh, the bottle count the frame id uh, the timestamp all these things we are sending to an amazon sqs queue and when Amazon SQS queue has a Lambda um, attached on, so the Lambda is listening on the queue, and Lambda is basically writing to an app sync through a mutation to, uh, to uh, Amplify, which is the actual website has been hosted. And this website is basically store manager can update all the thresholds and all these things and monitor that how that's going on. And as well as the app sync is writing all the metadata, which is coming from an SQS back to a DynamoDB. And any time the threshold get changed, the DynamoDB have a uh, the DynamoDB stream, which is nothing but a Lambda function. That Lambda function send a notification to an SNS topics, and that basically generates an email, which you saw in the previously to the store manager. Now, once the store manager got a notification, he has an ability to change the threshold back to whatever he want, and that threshold get propagated back to DynamoDB through an AppSync clause. Now, if you want to build this whole things at your home, you can do that. We have already a blog written up here. You can note it down this, this blog link. And if you have a device, you can exactly uh, replicate the same demo. Now, let me go through a console walkthrough uh, to give you some sense that how Panorama has been um, registered and what are the things need to be done as part of this process. So when you go log into the AWS console, you go to the Panorama service and you click on the get started. When you click on the get started, you might pop up a screen that you need to create some service role. In my case, it doesn't pop up because I have already gone through that process. It is just one time. So you have to just click on OK. And after you do, there are three steps essentially to do. First, you need to register your device, which is called add your device. It's taking around 10 to 15 minutes. And then you have to add a camera, which is a source of your panorama. And then you deploy the machine learning model, which you might have developed in SageMaker or maybe some other third party platform. Now, as I have already gone through all this process, let me show you that how it looks like in a console. So as a first step, I have registered the device, which is my appliance here. And here is my latest software version 4.3.30.45. And then we added a data source, which is uh, I have an IP camera, which is uh, connected to a uh, as a source of the panorama and then the third step is deploy the applications so i have a smart self applications which i deployed in the in the plans this is pretty much from a panorama standpoint in terms of the setup configuration deploying the things now we'll talk about some of the the features and the uh, the new releases which came up so the Panorama appliance, which is as Banu mentioned, it is, uh, it is a combination of the appliance and the SDK. So Panorama appliance do hold the Panorama SDK and it's a proprietary AWS. It is not an open source. Uh, and right now it supports uh, 16 RTSP the stream in parallel. Uh, it has a 32 gigs of RAM with a Jetson Xavier, uh, the AGX hardware from NVIDIA. Um, from a developer life easier, we make that the applications development more on container approach. So means developer can build and deploy containerized computer vision applications in Panorama. Um, it, the, the SDK do have a pre-built integration with the cloud services, such as if you wanna talk with cloud services, such as uh, NQTT or SQS or any other cloud services, you can use both or three libraries to do that one. Uh, the management console, which is just a control plane, where you can register the device, provision the model, um, or even doing any kind of a health check of your device. All these things you can do through control pin is a management console. We do have a service APIs. So if you want to deploy the fleet of devices 
uh, or fleet of applications we have to deploy on those devices. You can use Service API for that one. We do support the health reporting, like whether your Panorama device up and running, what are the camera status, how is your application status, all these things you can, you can monitor through the management console. Um, from a security standpoint, it do support uh, the secure boot end-to-end -end network encryptions. Um, data at rest is being encrypted. Uh, um, data in transit from Panorama to the cloud services is automatically at HTTPS and encryption over there. So TLS encryptions are there. And it definitely provides the least privileged network access. The most importantly, the device and region availability, we do support uh, the different region within US, which is listed here. We do support Europe, um, Asia specific. And uh, from an availability standpoint, you can purchase the device through an Elemental, AWS Elemental service, or through a .com or .com business account. Now let's talk about some of the new feature which has been released just a week back. Uh, we recently released a GPU access. So now you can run your machine learning uh, the algorithms from your favorite frameworks such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, uh, even MXNet. And uh, also you can use OpenCV directly your panorama to access GPUs. And that help you to low latency use cases, uh, faster uh, inference time. In this kind of an use cases, we have been seeing a wide adoption of the GPUs. Behind the scene, it basically supports uh, uh, your model to be get optimized on TensorRT. Before this release, we only support uh, Neo as a uh, compiler for the for your model. But as we release, as part of this release, this feature, you can use TensorRT to optimize your model and deploy into those devices. Now, second feature we release inbound network access. So by default, before this release, we don't support any inbound communications to Panorama due to the security reason. But we have been see customers have been asking so long that we need some sort of inbound network access to have Panorama to get uh, do the inference based on the outside trigger. Such as an example, um, if uh, if your car from a, from a rental car companies, we have seen an adoption like they want to monitor the camera inference if there is a uh, car going through the lane based on their passes recognition done by the LPR cameras. So they want to trigger the panorama model based on the LPR trigger from outside. On those use cases, inbound network access is very important, and that's how this feature really helps. Third feature, we release the CloudWatch alarm. So the CloudWatch alarm is a configurable if you want to monitor the uh, devices, applications, health, or even the devices memory and uh, storage kind of installations, you can define that we have a new namespace in the CloudWatch, uh, CloudWatch console, um, the console and you can define that namespace and you can choose whatever the uh, uh, the metrics you want to monitor on. And from there, define a CloudWatch alarm to trigger some sort of external event to sort in your uh, the um, their MTTR. And the last but not least, any of the feature we've been released, we always update our uh, the GitHub samples. So for example, GPU access or inbound network communications, all these features, we do have a sample notebook, which is our um, uh, GitHub samples. If you search in AWS samples GitHub, you will get that one. Um, and over there, we have all the notebook listed. If you want to know more about what are the features has been released, you can go to our what's new the post and you can learn from there. Finally, uh, there are some additional ratios you can tap on. I'm not going to read each and individually, but if you want to know about the pricing, which is very important from a customer to define their use case and make sure they are getting the right ROI, they need to know the pricing details. So it's a very flat pricing. You can go through that. Uh, we have any panorama features we've been releasing. We update the feature sections of our product page and any customer references or FAQ you can look on this page. With that, I'm going to have a last slide to talk about how do you get started with panorama. So most of the customers first start with the planning session. And this is very important because maybe the customer has a very cool use case, but sometimes we have seen that customers is trying very hard to define the ROI from those use cases and define the KPIs from those use cases. 
So customer really need to not only to think about their use case, but also need to focus on how, uh, how to how Panorama can solve the use case, which can come, uh, which can keep the better ROI for the customer, which can soak it to the business leadership. So this session is very important, and we can have a call with the customer to talk about this, how that works. We do have a proper template so that we can ask the right questions to customer, and customer can drive from there. Uh, deployment, the second step after the planning, either customer can choose the partner. Uh, we have a wide variety of partner ecosystem, which Banu has already pointed out. All customer can use their in-house uh, expertise to build the computer vision applications and the models, which can be deployed in the production, in the deployment phase. In the deployment phase, customer has to buy the appliances, uh, do the, all the infrastructure setup, such as integrating with their existing IP cameras, um, make sure their network firewalls port has opened, everything has been set up, and they can deploy that, the model which has been de developed by the partner or by the individual customers, and they can de deploy in the Panorama application using an emulator. So with that, I'm going to end up my slides, and I'll be will be here to take any questions you have. Thank you.